A very good afternoon and welcome back to the touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasiki. We're still on until 3 o'clock. Remember later on, we shall be dwelling into matters international football with regards to what happened last night and other headlines. Ken Andrew is already here with us. Joe Saina will be joining us later on. But of course, I'm still here with one big man, Ngarwa Kamuya. Now a sports consultant and marketer. <laughs> <laughs> and now we will talk about how sports can spur economy. Mm. You know, there is a way with which sports can bring uh, rapidly to mm. the growth and development mm. of economy. Something that people have never known. Mm -hmm. We just take it for granted. We think we're doing it for fun. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a conversation we are having off yeah. here. Um, yeah. I think the reason we are having this discussion, uh, Max, is because in the course of the week we were talking about the fact that sports has not resumed in Kenya. Yes. And the question is why. Mm -hmm. And my answer is very simple. Yeah. Sports is an answer in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You're right. If you look at the NBA, it's resumed. Mm -hmm. They are now going into the playoffs. Yeah. The NFL. Formula has, One. Formula One resumed. Yes. The NFL. NFL. Sorry. Say they are going to resume. Uh, they are going to start the season when it's supposed to start. Yes. Um, English Premier League resumed. Mm -hmm. uh, Champions League resumed. Mm -hmm. Um, rugby in New Zealand, we've been talking about it recently. It's been there. It's been there the last 10. Yeah. The reason is because mm. these sports are a big contributor to the economy of these countries. Yeah. And that is the reason why um, they, 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 have, they have a seat at the table yeah. when the conversation is being had about COVID response and everything. Yeah. Case in, let's start with America. The NBA. They were able to sit down in two months, come up with a supplement to how they are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And what did they decide? They've gone to Florida. Yeah. Uh, they're in the Walt Disney Park, mm -hmm. in what's called the bubble. The bubble, yeah. yeah. It's a complex for mm -hmm. Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. The games are being played there. There's no exiting from the bubble. Yeah. Uh, you're tested randomly or frequently. Uh, there's, a golf, there's a golf course there, so they play once in a while. And then, even in these teams, they are able to have 300 virtual uh, fans. Fans tune into these games. Mm -hmm. The NBA is going to be completed. The TV contracts are going to be. And especially mm -hmm. now when guys yes. can go to stadiums, mm -hmm. you can imagine how the ratings are going to skyrocket, right? Yeah. Uh, we've talked about the NFL uh, resuming. In the English Premier League, uh, conversations were had, and in two months, the yeah. English Premier League had resumed. Yeah. So that they were able to complete. The Bundesliga was the first. Exactly. Yeah. Bundesliga was the, the first. first. Yeah. It's because of the amount of money that these sports contribute to the economy. And it's yeah. not, you see, we were, have to, we were talking about uh, perhaps maybe a wrong model that mm -hmm. Ricardo Badoa is employing at, 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 at Wazito. Right. And if it was me, if I have that money, Max, today if I had half a million, half a billion shilling city, yeah. it's very easy. Just constitute a former company that is going to finance a sports club. Mm -hmm. The company issue shares to other strategic investors, but with that money, you meet the expenses of the club yeah and you know one of the biggest things we always say is butts on the seat mm -hmm. we need people in the stadiums yeah that is the first way of making money yeah in kenya we always try to jump that stage mm -hmm. and we go to commercial sponsorships yeah and broadcasting mm -hmm. but it is very systemic you need people in the stadium first then after people in the stadium you mm -hmm. need that's when the commercial partners come yeah if you can guarantee someone ten thousand people a weekend yeah then somebody will come and say, okay, fine, I'll give you 100 million shillings. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Robert, yeah. I, the biggest casualty of, you know, coronavirus pandemic, which is here with us to stay, following the reports of numbers increasing day in, day out, has been the event sector. Yes. And, you know, SAFO, World Rally Championship was mm. supposed to take place in the country. It was postponed to some later date, I think next year. Kenya yes. Open. Kenya, Kenya Open. Open. Yeah. I think World Under 20 Championship. Uh -huh. You and I... We were yes. together at Kasarani Mu International Sports Center in 2017 mm -hmm. during war and 18. Mm -hmm. And we saw how revenue was generated. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. A lot of people got an opportunity to be empowered. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people yes. coming through for, you know, offering a lot of services. Mm -hmm. Something that uh, was crippled this year because of pandemic, which, of course, we don't have control over. Mm -hmm. But now, considering that all these events have been, uh, you know, put together to take place next year, how well can these sporting administrators and managers ensure that, you know, the revenue that was lost this year can get generated at a surpassed level come next year? Is it, is it really possible? Mm. And even the culprits, the people who lost job opportunities following, you know, the procrastination I, I of this me, event. Uh, COVID-19 and the sports economy has been a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. It's been like an eyeball opener to sports uh, stakeholders more so administrators and uh, sports owners in the country because they have seen that 
the sports industry in Kenya is actually insignificant to the economy of Kenya. It adds no value, Zero value. to the economy of Kenya. <laughs> I can, uh, and I can state mm -hmm. that categorically. Is that the reason and why it, President never attends a uh, no, football no, no, match, no, no, but no, no, no. That, he does? We don't know about a local... That, that, that's not the reason. <laughs> Golf that's, game? No, no, that's not the reason at all. That's not the reason at all. It is that you look at even our budget, when our budget is being done in the country, how much money is being given to sports? In that the government, the treasury knows that this money we are giving to sports is because also sports as an entity of this economy adds value to our economy. You come to an understanding that it does not add any value. One, sports is not professional in Kenya. It's all year long since our first union was established, I think back in 46, 1946, has all been, sports is being taken as an a recreational as a exercise pastime, yes. as a pastime no one wants to go there and say this sport needs to be professional mm -hmm. and if we can professionalize it mm -hmm. then we can go 100 percent and see that now we have sports in the country that adds value to this economy now when we talk about magical kenya open when you talk about the safari rally uh, and we talk about these uh, big matches that come, the test mm -hmm. matches that come into the country, the employment of these people is secondary to their main employment of all the people who are working in this industry of sports in Kenya. Realize that. Mm -hmm. Someone who is a caddy in uh, golf in mm -hmm. the Magical Open, that is not his full-time job. This is a that's second, a last uh, resort. Yeah, that's a second an alternative. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's an alternative job to him. These event companies in Kenya don't work 100% for sports. They do other jobs. When sports comes in, it is secondary. I, to I want to make a quick but yeah. <laughs> it, it, You see, uh, look, you know, you know my stand. I've always yeah. said that government yeah. should not be the one funding. Uh, government should just create an environment yes. for the private investor to get in. Now, you see, back to our initial point. Three revenue... Has government done that in the first place? It hasn't. Is the environment it hasn't. currently conducive? It, it hasn't. But, again, at the same time, um, sometime, sometimes and most times, government is spurred into those things. Yeah. For example, a case in point, the betting industry. The betting industry has grown because of Sport Pesa. Yes. Sport Pesa was just a couple of investors who sold a loophole. A loophole. And so, okay, we can make money through this. And Sport Pesa blew up, and then they were like, mm -hmm. okay, now government comes and starts putting mm -hmm. the policy. Yeah. So, if, like, three revenue earners for sports. Number one, mm -hmm. Ticket sales. Ticket sales. But yeah. on the seat. That mm -hmm. is what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Number two is commercial partnerships. Mm -hmm. Number three is broadcasting. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, let's not even focus on broadcasting. We are far. Let's mm -hmm. focus on the first two. Mm -hmm. Now, ticketing. Ticketing is people, numbers through the gate. Numbers through the gate is creating an environment. Two thirds of the people who go for any sporting event yeah. do not go for the game. They go for the experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a third. A third. Who go. When you go for the Kenya Open, you yeah. Do not even know <laughs> what the hell goes on over uh, in a golf course. Yeah. But you'll pay because of the experience. Yeah. You want to say that? I was at the Kenya Open. When yeah. sevens was a big thing in, yeah. the, in the 2000s and early 2010s, 90% mm -hmm. of the people who were there did not know what a try was. Okay, maybe they knew. They didn't know what the game of rugby was. <laughs> yes. But they were there because of the experience. I think mm -hmm. I can attest this. I've attended a few games. Yes. And you're meeting, you know, some of our friends, especially on the other gender, yes. attending the game in large numbers, and you ask them uh, which teams are playing, yeah. they are clueless about They're what there is happening. for the experience. Yes. So once you sort out the experience, and it has to be a 360-degree experience. Mm -hmm. The example I always use in Kenya is, think of the Koroga Festival. Uh -huh. The Koroga Festival on a bad day has 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. On a good day, it has mm -hmm. 10,000 people. Yes. Now look at your teams mm -hmm. as the artists. Yeah. You have to, you see 3,000 people go regardless of who it is. It yeah. might be a crap artist, but they don't care. And be They're, all Kenyan artists. We, we, yeah, we will yeah. go. Yeah. We will go because <laughs> there's a 360 degree experience yeah. of the fun. Mm -hmm. Now that's what they need to create. Uh, the artists for us in this particular case are the teams on the pitch. So create an environment where, even if I'm not watching the game, I'll enjoy being there for two hours. Yeah. If it's my beer, if it's my yama, if it's conversation. I think, I think Joe Zaina now will agree with Ngarwa very yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been putting him in the spot on why he rarely attends a KPL match and he says no value for his money. Exactly. It's, mm -hmm. it's about value for your money. Yeah. It's a, when, you, when I'm told to pay 500 bob, 
I want to pay 500 bob, not only for the game, but for the environment, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, once you're able, now, to meet that, it's a marketing cost, right? The marketing cost cannot be met by the sponsor. Yeah. It has to be met by you. And you since know, why I keep on talking about this privatizing yeah. thing, the investor puts in the money, the money is used to market the sport or to build an environment that is attractive for the fun. The fun comes in. Yeah. Now you can go to Safaricom and tell them, I'm guaranteeing you 10,000 guys a weekend. Yeah. Pay me 200 million shillings. They will, give they you will that not money. even bat an eyelid. You, they will pay that 200 you, you million. You remember when the owner of Lakers was buying Lakers, mm -hmm. I think it was back in the 60s or the 70s. No, he actually he bought it in 79. 79. It's Jerry Bass, yes. Yeah. When uh, they came with uh, Showtime, mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. Showtime? Yes. It was not about the game of basketball. Yes. It was about the event the around events. the game of basketball. When they came with the cheerleaders. They Actually, the let me team. just to interject. Kidogo, he had a four, he had a four, four step plan. Yeah. Plan number one is what you've said. He, he replaced the organists with, uh -huh. cheerleaders. with cheerleaders. He was the first person to bring in cheerleaders mm -hmm. in professional sport. Mm -hmm. Number two, the hottest nightclub in Los Angeles. Was, was the lake was, the was the, it was called the forum club yeah at the forum the forum was their stadium mm -hmm. that was number two number three mm -hmm. uh is uh, what we normally call influencers nowadays the hollywood and, celebrities. And exactly he got the hollywood celebrities <laughs> yeah. and told them okay you guys mm -hmm. i'll give you the best tickets mm -hmm. you know just come for our games yeah i'll give you the best tickets mm -hmm. and then number four and maybe the master stroke for him was he said now, if we are making it about the event, yeah. our playing style has to be about the event. event. And he hired, they just drafted Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. and they, ha they hired Pat Riley. Yeah. And they said they're going to play the run and gun basketball, mm -hmm. hence the term, the Showtime Lakers. Yeah. Those four is what took Lakers mm -hmm. to the next level, and actually mm -hmm. created the blueprint yeah. for the sports economy in the mm -hmm. States. And that's what we need. You see, everything was focused on the fun. The fun. What does the fan want to see? The fan wants to see Denzel Washington there. Yeah. The fan, so, to date, Jack yeah. Nicholson is still a season ticket holder. The fan wants to see he Jack doesn't miss any Lakers He doesn't game. miss a Lake, Lake, mm. Lakers game. Yeah. The fan wants to see Jack Nicholson. Do you know how serious it is for Jack Nicholson? When Kobe Bryant was retiring, they yeah. did a video of uh, celebrities, mm. basketball players. Jack Nicholson was the only non-basketball player to comment on that video. You're because right? he was there. He's an integral part of the Lakers. Yeah. Right? I, I think even the New York Knicks tried it Spike with Spike Lee. Lee. Yeah, they, they did it with Spike they Lee. Did it with Spike Lee. If you look at the Boston they teams, grew, they, they, they do it very well with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Right? So it's a yeah. fun experience. I so, know that halftime there's going to be a cheerleader or yes. something like that. There's going to be a show there's or some a sort. Performance. There's a performance. Yeah. I know that their style of play is attractive. I know that. When I'm done with a game, yeah. there's a nightclub here that's a hot nightclub. <laughs> and I know number five, number yeah. four, there's a possibility of me seeing Denzel Washington. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Max, we are digressing a bit. But Which is a good re thing re well. Remember yeah. even the Super Bowl? Yes. Super Bowl, even me, I've never been to the United States. I can't lie that I've been to the United States. Mm -hmm. But I'm one of the people who watch halftime Super Bowl. Yes. What's happening at the halftime of <laughs> Super Bowl? It's not about the game. It's, you, a, it's, a, it's a performance. You, you actually come to find that people have seen halftime performances of Super Bowl and they don't know who the quarterback winner of that game of, was. And because at that halftime, movies are selling their trailers. Yeah. Artists are performing. A companies are advertising. And these are what people want to see. You'll forgive mm -hmm. me. Just, just comment on the Super Bowl. Again, mm -hmm. for the Super Bowl, for the NFL to revive. It was, a, it was a Super Bowl that revived. And you know what they did in the early 90s? The biggest artist was Michael Jackson. Yes. They said, okay, fine. We need a big person for the halftime show. And they got Michael Jackson. They did not even have the money to pay Michael Jackson. But they said, whatever revenue we raise, we'll channel some to some charity that is supported by Michael Jackson. And Michael did it. And it was a ridiculous show. And it took off. Now as we speak, yeah. as we speak, my guys, a 30-second interview Super Bowl is worth $6 million. Oh, my goodness. You have to pay $6 million. So, yes. yeah. where did the rain start beating us? Because yesterday I was at Sadil Oval. The good old lady did something, a fantastic venture. I think mm -hmm. she's in overseas right now mm -hmm. in the States. Mm -hmm. And she put up, you know, also, Robert, you might have been there. Mm -hmm. I think even uh, yeah. uh, Serena Williams came there at some uh -huh. time back yes. to launch the facility. Mm -hmm. But right now, I think people are just going there for fun. To play, you see, it's evening football. To for, for, time. for me, where did brain start beating for, us? Professionalism, professionalism and business. Yeah, because business. the mistake we keep on making in yeah. Kenya 
is you insist that the administrators must be former players. No. You are a good player, yes. yes. That doesn't mean you're a good manager. Yeah. The NBA... That you know the game exactly. Supposed to the be NBA right. have just appointed a guy called Victor Adams as a CEO for NBA Africa. Yes. Victor Adams' background is in investment banking and business development in the U.S. Yes. But he's the CEO. He's the one who's running NBA Africa. If you look at the commissioners in the States, yeah. and let's use the NBA because that's the one that's most familiar in Kenya. Yes. The NBA commissioner is Adam Silver. Prior to him was David Stern. Yeah. David Stern is a lawyer or was a lawyer. God rest mm -hmm. his soul in peace. Mm -hmm. He was a lawyer for the law firm that represented the NBA. Mm -hmm. And then he became the general counsel for the NBA. Yeah. And then he became the commissioner. Mm -hmm. He had nothing to do with basketball. Mm -hmm. Adam Silver is the same thing. Yes. Let's go to Manchester United, closer to home. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Ed Woodward. Ed Woodward, Ed Woodward is an investment That's banker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah sure. he, he became CEO of Man United because he was a transaction advisor for the Glazer family. In their acquisition Nothing of Man United. To do with Nothing to do it's with the sporting. It's all about business. It's business. It's all about and then you hire. Profits. You're a manager. Mm. The man, a manager. Then you bring work. people with Thank technical know-how. You, know yeah. you hire the people with the technical know-how. That is a mistake look at in this. Kenya. Our our sports in Kenya here. I don't think there's an administrator you can talk to and ask him. Can you think that your company one day will make it to the Nairobi Stock Exchange? Mm -mm. There's no administrator in Kenya no one thinks that who, can think, who thinks that and says that I want my company as Goldmeyer to make it to the stock No one exchange. thinks that way. And that's where money is. You need to make money. These, these clubs, these uh, sports entities are lives for people. Mm -hmm. They support people's lives. Mm -hmm. So it's all about profits. It's all and about the communities yeah, and around the communities them. Around and can you also say that the relationship between you know sports and government has to be symbiotic? Because it, we've seen... President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, attending a golf match at Karen Country Club. The last time he attended a rugby game, of which he's been a passionate and mm. I had mm -hmm. fun, was I think a few years ago between he didn't Kenya even, was playing against you. England. It was, he didn't even attend a rugby game. What he did is that he went to Impala Club when the finals of the Rugby World Cup 7s was, was happening between Kenya and the semi finals, so yes. between Kenya and England. Mm. You, but you see, and there's something he said at the Kenya Open in 2017 or 2018. Yeah. He said the only reason we're supporting golf is because they have their stuff in order. Yeah. It's not about it's elitism. Not, it's not about no. elitism. These guys had... Government only jumps in when they see something is big. Right? The Safari Rally. Phineas Kimathi has done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And that's why these guys... There might be some personal interests. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's because of the work Phineas Kimathi has done. When Mwangi Mode was chairman of Kenya Rugby Union, that's why the president wanted to be associated. We were having four test yes. matches a year. That's why he wanted to be associated country. with rugby. Huh? Because Mwangi Mode was mm. doing work. Do you know even the funny thing is that when Mwangi Mode was given the job for CEO of uh, the local organizing under yeah. 18. For world under 18, yes. he was being fought. Mm -hmm. and because they were saying, that you don't see us going to manage Safari You are an outsider. Yes. And in my head, I'm like, are you, are you, you're nuts. If you're coming up with that comment, you're nuts. Yeah. This is about management. It I has think, nothing to do with playing I the think, sport. Uh, people, you see... With the way COVID-19 has come in, it's when people now realize that sports outside there is big. Mm -hmm. you, you look at the Boston Marathon when it was cancelled, mm -hmm. there are hotels that close, like yeah. the Marriott Hotel. It closed down. It closed down because now this event comes here and it's not happening and we are suffering at the end of the day. Look at the PGA. Mm -hmm. They had in Park where yes. it had to close because there is no PGA. And these were people, these are, when the PGA comes, it adds into that economy. Econo into, into the macro. In, in, into that economy of that community, of that country. Look at the London Marathon mm -hmm. itself. They Two could, billion pounds. pounds. They could talk about the money that is being lost from that economy because of... That's how much London money the Marathon. London Marathon generates. Yeah. Two billion pounds. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, look... You know, the Super Bowl, I think, is the best example of symbiotic relationship between government and, and, private, and private enterprises. For example, you bid to host the to Super host Bowl. The, Super Bowl right? yeah. the one I know, I, I haven't read the details about this year. This year was in, uh, in Miami, Miami yeah. Florida, yeah. but I know the one for last year. Mm -hmm. And last year what happened is that the government of Georgia, yeah. Atlanta especially, mm -hmm. put in measures that made it attractive for the private guy to get into, to, to, to invest. To invest. Uh, and... All they do is that the biggest attraction is tax rebates. Yeah. And they tell you guys are yeah. going to get uh -huh. tax rebates on yeah. the money you spend for yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. So the private community or the private, the corporate community puts in a lot of money to make sure that Super Bowl is comes to Atlanta. To, to Atlanta. They yeah. raise a ridiculous amount of money to host the Super Bowl in Atlanta. What that happens is, number one, hotels. 
right? Yeah. Number two, your transport because guys, it's 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 public transport. Yeah. Number three, your hotels. Sorry, your your restaurants. Your yeah, restaurants, bars. Are bro. Uh, number four, the general spending that is happening in yeah. those areas yeah. is boosting the business at that time. At that particular time, for yeah. one week, you guys are generating almost two billion dollars yeah. yeah. just because of one event. In the yeah. states, in the, in England, yeah. before a stadium moves, let's say, let's use the case in point, Tottenham. Before Tottenham moved from White Hart Lane yeah. to where they are, what's the stadium now? Tottenham. Yes, yeah, 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 to where they moved right now. Yeah. The the City Council of London to approve their move. Hmm. One of the main things that Tottenham had to prove is how they were going to substitute for the businesses that have been lost around, around White, around White Hart Lane. Yeah. Wow. You see. So so how can you know our exports, the likes of Victor Wanyama, Michael Olunga, we've seen even in rugby. Our local mm -hmm. players doing us proud mm -hmm. on international platform. Colin Sinjera, mm -hmm. one of the all-time try scorers, mm -hmm. I think, standing at third position right now. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to surpass. Mm -hmm. You know, those ahead of him. Yeah. But you know, we've had you know talent getting exported to overseas mm -hmm. and doing exceptionally well, putting up a very spirited mm -hmm. performance abroad. How how are they resourceful to our bid to make you know sports? You know, they have of, you, you know, know you economic know, growth. The truth is, uh, and, 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 and the worst, I know it's going to sound bad, but the yeah. truth is, they are just athletes. Yeah. Uh, in individual capacity. They are just athletes in individual capacity. We don't expect them to be managers. And that is the mistake yeah. we repeatedly make in Kenya. That now, that when Collins retires in the next few years, mm -hmm. he has to transition into management. You mm. being an athlete. That's what Africa Yange, the elder brother, is doing is already doing at Noko. He's in management and we love to see the work that he's doing. But what I'm saying is that you being an athlete does not guarantee that you're going to be a manager. You being a stellar athlete mm -hmm. does not guarantee you're going to be an excellent manager. We have just talked yeah. about managers of sports in yes. foreign countries. They have nothing to do with the sport. Their work is to manage. Yeah. Your work is uh, actually, manage. it's good also that... If you are a former player and want to transition into sports management, mm -hmm. then go to school. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. ride on your former. Be, you are being yes. a former player. Yes. I think case in point locally can be Auka Geshe. Yes. yes. He was a former player. I mm -hmm. think he played for Nondis, Nondis played for Simba. Yes. Yeah, played for Mean Machine. Mm -hmm. When he was transitioning to sports management, he had to go to school. It's as simple as that. Go to school and then come back and manage. <laughs> Think about the the, think about the number of people who are in um, management or ownership of sports, yeah. former players. Mm -hmm. Think about Magic Johnson, yeah. Yeah. who was the president of basketball mm -hmm. operations at Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah. Uh, Magic got into that mm -hmm. as a manager and not as a former player. Yeah. Right. Think about Jordan. He owns the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. He's not there as Michael Jordan, the player. And by the way, he's very categorical even when he discusses. Yeah. He says, when I go for these meetings, mm -hmm. yes, I'm there as an owner. Yeah. At the back of my mind, yes, I understand. I used to put, you know, there's the guy in shorts. Yeah. But I'm an owner. Mm -hmm. And owner is all about business. But I think that is no. for a me, problem that has been befalling football. We've seen when someone <laughs> wants to contest, they are told, you've never been a player. We want this I, I, I position think, to be reserved uh, for... A person who sweated on the Kenya, pitch, you know? Kenya, That's nonsense. Kenya, <laughs> for us to make sports part of the economy growth, one thing that has to change is our culture. Our culture, sports has to change completely. And we have been repeating this. First, we need to change from being a recreational sport to professional sports. Let our players know that I'm finishing high school. I'm playing to be a Kenyan rugby player. The way players in the States do it. Mm -hmm. They finish high school knowing I'm going to college, but at the end of the day, I have to end up at the NFL or the NBA. Or you as a bandit. Oh, as a, yeah. yeah, that is it. Our culture has got to change. Even for the fans, we have to drill to them that going to the stadium is actually helping our but, sports. But, but again, oh, sorry, as uh, we just, wind up, of course, as now, we wind up, just, just, just yeah, as we wind up, as yeah. we wind up, at the, yes. We, they should grow up thinking that. Yeah. And there are very many people who grow up thinking that, by yeah. the way. But you have to make it attractive for yes. them to go there. Uh, yeah. And it, sports is top down. It never yeah. works bottom down. Yeah. You cannot keep on telling people to go to the stadium yeah. if there's no value for their money. Yeah. Yes. So we have to invest in the sport. Mm -hmm. Personally, this thing for communal community mm -hmm. ownership mm -hmm. cannot work. It's you done. have to privatize yeah. these things. 
It, can, it cannot work. You have to sit down and go in with a business model. Do not look at it from a governance perspective. Yeah. Go in with a business model. This is how much you put in. Yeah. This is how much, how much you, you get, get back. Yeah, it has to be from a business perspective. Only then, when you generate the money, is it going to be attractive for the player in high school? Mm -hmm. to become a rugby player or yeah. to become a football player. Mm -hmm. Only then will it be attractive for foreign coaches or local mm -hmm. coaches to yeah. get into it mm -hmm. and not look for a side hustle because yeah. they know at least here I have a salary of 200,000 bob. Yeah. And that is when government is going to come in with policy because for government now, this company that is running the sports club is giving them four tax lines. It's a new tax base. Yeah. It's giving them corporation tax. Mm -hmm. It's giving them VAT on goods and services. Mm -hmm. It's giving them withholding tax on dividend income and it's giving them pay of their employees. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we look at it. Wow, that has been an excellent conversation mm -hmm. revolving around how sports can spur economy and indeed, you know, a detailed topic that we need to delve the entire show.